All right, everyone. Well, thank you again. Um, my name is uh, Dr. Anthony Fior. I am the principal here at St. Ignatius High School, and I am very excited to be um, here tonight with you and to be joined by an awesome team of administrators and staff members here to really share um, how we can connect and support your student as they advance through their four years here at St. Ignatius High School. Um, just to let you know, this will be recorded and we will share it out with our other families um, probably through the peak of the week. So if there's something that comes up that you forget, um, don't feel like you need to take notes. The slide deck will also be shared as well. So again, thank you very much. And we'll start with a prayer. So let's take a moment um, to begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. And I'll read this prayer to us. Uh, feel free to follow along on the screen. Loving God, you are the giver of all we possess, the source of all of our blessings. We thank and praise you. Thank you for the gift of our student. Help us to set boundaries for him and yet encourage him to explore Give us the strength and courage to treat each day as a fresh start. May our student come to know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. May your Holy Spirit help him to grow in faith, hope, and love, so that he may know peace, truth, and goodness. May his ears hear your voice. May his eyes see your presence in all things. May his lips proclaim your word. May his heart be your dwelling place. May his hands do works of charity. May his feet walk in the way of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. Amen. St. Ignatius of Loyola, pray for us. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to go back aside here really quick. Um, here's the agenda for tonight. We have an opening prayer, which I just completed. Um, I'm going to give a shout out uh, to our team, a little formal introduction before they all present for themselves, I'll tell you a little bit about our upcoming sessions, and then we'll end the night with uh, some Q&A. Feel free to drop some Q&A, uh, some questions in the chat as well. We'll be monitoring those as we move along through the night. And again, welcome everyone. We're so thankful you're here. And we're so thankful that you've entrusted your son um, to us in, in these four years. Okay, so the administrative team, um, just a FYI, is basically the team that runs the day-to-day -day operations of the school and supports teachers to do what they do in the classroom. And you'll see in the on the slide deck right there that that circle in the middle, all these things we do for students, academics, athletics, counseling, student discipline, diversity, equity, inclusion work, faith formation, campus security, and student support. And the folks around that circle are members of the administrative team as assistant principals or directors, director roles here at St. Ignatius. And all of them are with us tonight, except for Mr. Tim Higgins and uh, Mr. Rory Fitzpatrick. I wanna give a kind of a plug for our other sessions and tell you a little bit about how this program emerged. So this is my fourth year as principal here at St. Ignatius. And over the last few years, especially after COVID, I had many conversations with parents who had items or issues or topics that they were concerned about for their son or, or their student. And we've been brainstorming as a team, how might we put together some kind of education program for our parents to support them as they can have um, come to learn concrete ways to, port, to support their student um, in these different areas. So you'll see um, on the slide, that we have seven sessions tonight being our first, and the rest of the sessions are really with experts in their field. Some who are um, members of our own community, but many who are just uh, friends of the school or who we've come to know within um, through certain partnerships. You'll see next month's topic is on um, substance abuse uh, with Dr. Michael Gobriel. Um, he's a, a Cleveland Clinic doctor. He's a current parent. Um, Daniel Ledenberger Klein is the chief executive officer at Stella Maris, and that'll be on Zoom like tonight. Then in November, we'll have an in-person session with Jenny Wallace, who is a New York Times bestseller, and that'll be in the Breen. Um, we're very excited about that. In January, um, Dr. Patrick Manning, who is an alum of St. Ignatius and works at um, Seton Hall University, 
will be um, present via Zoom to talk about spiritual practices for dealing with stress and busyness for students and for adults. Our very own John Jark will follow that up in February. Um, he's a current teacher and educational technologist here at St. Ignatius. He's a father as well. Um, so he has a good grasp on what does it mean to be a digital citizen um, today for teens and, and giving parents good practices and concrete ideas on how to help a teen learn to use social media and their devices as a tool um, to help them flourish. In March, on March 6th, Dr. Lisa Demore, another New York Times bestseller, uh, who is a clinical psychologist, will be here to speak in person at the Breen Center um, on the emotional lives of teenagers. And we're really excited for Lisa to be here um, with us in March as well. And then finally, we're going to host a session with one of our partners out of Stanford at Challenge Success on a healthier approach to college admissions. This will be the second or third time that they've run this session for us over Zoom, but it's also really fruitful um, and very exciting. So we're, again, we're really excited about this program. Thank you for being here. You don't have to come to all of them. Hopefully you come to, to many and the ones that are of interest to you, uh, but know that they will all be recorded and shared out with parents in case you're unable to attend in person or on Zoom. And after that, I'm going to pass it over to Mr. Dave Sable, who's gonna talk a little bit about academics. Great, thanks Dr. Fior. Uh, so again, yeah, my name is Dave Sable. I'm the assistant principal for academics. Um, I'm entering my third year here in this role. Uh, I started back at the school I graduated in 99 and I started back at the school in 2006 where I served as a math teacher for, for many years until moving into this role. So uh, I'm very fortunate to, to be able to work with this team and to work to serve uh, all of your students here at the school every day. So thanks for coming tonight. Uh, Dr. Fear, you can hit the next slide there. You know, we do have a lot of assistant principals at the school, and, and that's one of the, the reasons we have a meeting like this, to help explain what it is that we all do. And, um, you know, trying to keep everybody straight and all the different tasks that we have is another one of our priorities to help you understand tonight. And for me in particular, uh, I'm the assistant principal for academics. And specifically, that means that uh, I am in charge of generally the curriculum of the school, uh, but more specifically, um, I also manage all the grades and grading systems and records that the school uh, runs, systems like Canvas, uh, Power Schools, another system that we use more to manage attendance and also like long-term record keeping. Um, if your student has special academic circumstances, uh, maybe your student's going to be out for a surgery for a long period of time, uh, or there's other special circumstances we need to discuss, I might be a person that you would need to contact. I run the academic support list, which we'll be talking about in a few minutes. And um, I can also help manage and, and, and help with questions about academic support. Uh, and I partner uh, with Emily Samick, who you'll be hearing from shortly on that as well. One of the other things that I handle uh, here on campus is uh, managing all the standardized testing on campus. Uh, pertinent to that, there are going to be some uh, PSATs uh, uh, for freshmen, sophomores, and juniors taking place on October 11th. We're getting all of your students ready for that right now because for the very first time, all of them will be taking it on a digital device. Uh, in most cases, their own digital device. So we're prepping all of them for that now here at school. And you'll actually be getting some uh, uh, info from me pretty soon about that. Uh, hit the next slide there, Dr. Fiore. Um, so uh, one of the things I really wanna make sure that you know coming out of this evening, if you, if you aren't already set up with this, is how to make sure that you can follow your students' grades on Canvas. Um, so Canvas is the learning management system that we use as a school. It is what your teacher, your son's teachers use to communicate all assignments and all grades to them. Um, so you can set up an account on Canvas and observe your students' grades and assignments. You can see absolutely everything that they see. Uh, you just can't actually interact and submit things and do all that kind of stuff. Um, if you haven't already been set up with that, I just posted a link in the chat for the, for the Zoom here. If you're watching on a video and you don't have access to these instructions, please email me uh, at dsabol at ignatius.edu and I can help make sure you're connected with that. But using this, uh, this uh, how-to, you can set up an account on Canvas and then with your students' help, connect to it um, uh, so that you can start observing them. And, and honestly, that'll work for your students' whole experience here at the school. Um, yeah, go ahead at the next slide. So, you know, if you're observing Canvas, this is what a typical student's Canvas front page would look like. 
um, uh, oftentimes. You'll see all the different courses the student takes out there in the front. If you click on one of those, you'll be able to open up and see different uh, assignments that have been posted or course material or information about the course. If you wanna view the student's grades, there's a little arrow pointing down there. If you scroll down that window in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see a button that says view grades. You might see a slightly different view. Hit the next slide there, Dr. Fior. Sometimes you'll see it looks actually like this. It kind of depends on what mode uh, it's set to view in. They're both kind of different ways to look at it. But if you're looking at it in this mode, there's that little icon in the upper right-hand corner. But if you click those, go on through the next one, Dr. Fior. This is what you'll see. Um, so this student has actually had a great start. Uh, but you'll be able to see each one of your students' classes and the current grades that they have right now. One more slide there, Dr. Fear, for me. Great. Uh, so one more thing I want to talk about before I pass it off to the next person is something called the academic support list. This is uh, a process and a list that I maintain. Uh, the checks for this will begin on September 28th. After that, they run every three weeks, uh, pretty much throughout the rest of the school year, although we take a, another little gap at the semester break. So every time you run one of these checks, everybody knows that students uh, get a, get a notice that this is gonna be happening later that week. And uh, teachers also uh, are notified to make sure the grades are, are updated for this check. But uh, at 8.30 in the morning on these Thursdays, I take a look and um, generally looking for grades that are under 70%. If it's a failing grade um, that, that weighs a little bit more heavily in the process, if it's a grade from 65 to 69, uh, it weighs, but not as much. And uh, if a student's grades qualify him for the list, then he gets notified. You will also be notified with that process. We notify his teachers. We say the student, um, you know, we have we have concerns about the student. We ask that he meets with his counselor or another advocate to talk about what's going on, see if there's any way that we can offer support. And then we will uh, we'll kind of watch. Three weeks later, if he ends up on the list again, we, um, we offer a lot more uh, intentional support. Um, some study halls that will ha he'll have to attend. And at that point, he will be restricted from uh, athletics uh, or extracurriculars until his grades improve. Uh, and that could be a day later, it could be two weeks later, but as soon as they improve, he leaves the list and he can participate in those activities again. So this is an important way for us to find, locate students that are, are struggling and offer them the support that they need. And speaking of support, uh, the next uh, assistant principal you'll speak to is the assistant principal for Student Support Services, Emily Samick. Good evening and welcome. Thanks for being with us tonight. And if you're watching this later, thank you for giving us your time to, to learn more about ways you can support your student. You know, at St. Ignatius, we talk about Cura Personalis, and that's the care for the whole person. And that's really the whole focus of my department is how can we care for your student in all the ways he needs support outside the classroom. So first of all, my role is that I oversee um, 19 faculty and part-time tutors. So we have a, a lot of great people here to work for your, for your students. School counseling, college counseling, and then the rest of my team um, work in the Walton Center. We have intervention specialists, uh, an academic coach, and we have several part-time professional tutors, who many of whom, if, uh, you had another son that went through here or you went here yourself, you know, Mr. Brian Becker, Mr. Ed Nolan, Mr. John Cooney, some beloved, wonderful teachers are tutoring in the Walton Center and those tutors are open to any student. So our school counseling department, your student has an assigned school counselor and that person will always be his number one resource in the building. If ever there's any question he has or any concern you have, you'll want to start with either the student's teacher if it's about one class, but if it's a more holistic uh, concern, you'd wanna start with his school counselor. Um, right now, the school counseling team is meeting with every single freshman family for what they, we call freshman family conferences. So it's the school counselor, uh, families, and including the student. And it's a kind of a get to know you, meet and greet. Um, so if you have not signed up for your freshman family conference yet, yeah, please check your email um, for that calendar sign up. School counseling is an open door policy, so you don't have to have an appointment. You can always, they, your, your student, or you can always email the counselor, but um, if ever there's anything going on, you can always go down to counseling, and even if your uh, student's counselor isn't there, 
um, they, the, someone down there will be there to support him. The school counseling department right now is across from the Wildcat shop. Every student on our campus knows where the Wildcat shop is. So if he can find the Wildcat shop, he just needs to turn around down the hall and that's where school counseling is. And if you are not sure who your student school counselor is, um, Mrs. Elizabeth Emmerich can help you figure that out or you can email me and I'd be happy to help you with that as well. Our college counseling department really starts supporting your student in his junior year. So junior year, he'll have both his school counselor and a college counselor. Right now, I know there were several senior families that um, are on this Zoom today. The most important thing your, your child can do is meet with his counselor for their one-on-one -on -one fall appointment. If he has not set up his fall appointment with his college counselor, have him get on his college counselor's calendar tonight and make that appointment. Um, you know, we take a lot of pride in our personalized approach to college counseling. Um, and and he, he needs to make sure he's taking advantage of that. I also wanted to mention that on October 11th, uh, Mr. Sable just mentioned the testing day. For seniors, that is also a mandatory day, but they are not testing. They are in a day of discernment, which is a day where they have um, people from all different professions come to campus and talk about what they do and what, what are some um, different majors you can think about as you are trying to figure out what's next. The last thing I wanted to mention about our college counseling program tonight is that this year we have a new program for our first generation college families. And this is going to apply to all students at the school who are first-gen families. Um, the team is working right now to plan their first student and family outreach. Um, if you're curious and you know your, your student is a first generation, so he's going to be the first one in his family to graduate from college. Um, those are our two moderators this year, Jen Holtz of the College Counseling Department and Bogi Savic of the School Counseling Department. Um, but they will be reaching out to all families who um, qualify for that program. But if you want to learn more, you can reach out now. The last department that I oversee is the Walton Center. This is our resource room for students on learning plans and students uh, in need of extensive academic support. You know, Mr. Sable just mentioned, we frequently will have students that are coming back from an extended absence for whatever reason. Um, and the Walton Center is typically part of that student's transition plan back into school to help kind of manage, you know, the massive number of assignments and working with his teachers and just a point person to really help um, get back on track. Uh, our new school psychologist, Mrs. Bethany Baker, um, she is responsible for all learning plans. So for anyone out there whose um, son was on a 5, uh, 504 or IEP or SAGO plan um, at his previous school in eighth grade, uh, and you have not submitted documentation to Ms. Baker, you know, she'd be happy to support you with um, getting, getting your son a plan. And Next is uh, one thing I wanted to share with you is our freshman seminar class. That's a class that all of the freshmen will take either first semester or second se semester. It's run by the school counseling department. They are the teachers. It really focuses on a lot of transition to high school topics. Who are your resources on campus? How do you buy a homecoming bid? Um, this week, this is what uh, many of them were doing. They were learning how to calculate their GPA. Um, it might feel a little early uh, to be looking at that number, but that number is something that doesn't magically fall from the sky or magically come out in the computer. Um, our grade scale in particular is one that you can't just go on to an online calculator and figure it out. So our school counselors walk them through that and help them understand what it means for them this year and in long term. Um, the other program that we have for all students is our advisory program. All of our students are, are matched with a teacher in what we call advisory, it sort of feels like a homeroom program. Freshmen and sophomores on Tuesdays are in advisory from 1255 to 140. And our juniors and seniors are in advisory on Thursdays from 1255 to 140. It's mandatory. It's a lot of community building, faith formation, and homeroom business. This week in advisory, the freshmen and sophomores went to the activity fair that Mr. Martin's going to talk about here momentarily. And our juniors the, uh, today were learning about their senior capstone project called the Sushipay project. 
So they were all together learning about what's going to happen next year. And our seniors were meeting with their college counselor to kind of walk through some of the step-by-step -step elements of the Common App. So, you know, students may love or not so much love advisory sometimes, but I assure you that time is being used to make sure really important information is getting to them in person with an adult that knows the program, for example, that capstone program today. Uh, it's also the home of the Big Brother program for freshmen. So if you have a freshman or sophomore student who you think would be a good mentor to students in the future, um, when he's a junior and senior, he can apply to be a Big Brother, which is a mentorship program through the Freshman Advisory. The last thing I wanted to share today is that if your student is struggling, you know, where do you start? Where do you go? Um, his school counselor is first and foremost the place that you can in go place that you can go. The second is his teacher. His teacher, and I said this at back to school night for the freshmen, but I want to say that for everyone else here today, you know, students are always saying, oh, my teacher doesn't like me. My teacher's going to be mad because I don't know what's going on. You know, that, that anxiety around just going and talking to a teacher is real and it's normal. And it's something that we as his support team and you as his family can really support him with advocating for himself. Walk over to that classroom, talk to that teacher, practice what to say. You know, those are all things that kids need support with. And that's um, something that we can all do together. We do have the teacher office hours. Those are just hours that students can go in and get extra help, ask questions, make up a test, um, just be like, hey, I didn't get what was going on in class today. Uh, that's what teachers are there for with office hours. And we do have a lot of other tutoring programs in the school that are free. Um, our math lab is uh, staffed by math teachers, and that is available during the formation periods and the lunch periods. Um, we do have the same thing for English, for writing. We have a peer writing program. Um, that new calendar just uh, maybe is posted, it was uh, just sent today. So that program is now up and running. And we also have a peer tutoring program that those students are just getting on board right now. Um, that program will launch at the beginning of October. So if you go to the St. Ignatius website, uh, all of those programs are outlined, including the teacher office hours, what classroom, what time of day um, do those teachers have those hours. You know, in thinking about, you know, Dr. Fierro was introducing the future guest speakers for this new teacher or new parent formation program. Um, I would recommend if you're if you're looking for more, how can I connect with my kid? I'm having this particular struggle as a parent. This is a really hard time for us as a family. You know, there are so many different things. You know, those uh, speakers I personally follow on social media and I listen to Lisa Demore's podcast. I follow her on social media. So if you're looking for something more, we are so lucky to be having such amazing people coming to our campus. Check those people out and be part of that kind of bigger um, support network for your for your young um, your young students. So thank you so much. I am going to pass it off to uh, Mr. Brian Martin, our assistant principal for student life. Okay, thanks, Emily. Um, I want to reiterate uh, the welcome uh, to all of you parents on behalf of the whole A-team. Um, I'll also reiterate um, my excitement. You know, Emily just uh, very eloquently uh, put the plug in for the rest of this program, but I know as a team, um, we are all tremendously excited about what this program has to offer uh, to all of you and, and really to us as well. So, um, we are uh, very excited that you're joining us. So uh, my role, so what is an assistant principal for student life? That's a role that probably most of you did not have uh, growing up in high school. Um, it is a role that's very common at uh, most of the Jesuit high schools across the country now. This is, um, I think, sort of demonstrates this, this Jesuit um, adherence to the idea of cura personalis, right? So what we do is not just about the education inside of the classroom, but it's about um, just as importantly about the education that, that our guys are receiving outside of the classroom. So in a nutshell, I guess you could say that, that my role really is to just help facilitate student engagement uh, within the school community outside of the classroom. 
Um, and what that means is is kind of a lot of different things. And, and my role has been described in the past as something of a sort of an air traffic controller, because there's always a hundred different things going on uh, in any given uh, week here, here at school um, beyond just what the guys are doing in the classroom. But um, I would say there, there's really five primary um, roles that that I serve in, in this role as AP for Student Life here. Um, uh, you know, uh, we do a lot of events. Obviously, you all know homecoming is uh, coming up, uh, I would assume, this weekend. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of my comments. But uh, Spirit Week, Freshman Orientation, uh, what a, if you're new to the school and you're not familiar with Lumberjack Day, it's one of the great days here of, of kind of student fun and engagement and, and kind of community building. So, um, so you know, we do in our office here a, a lot with events, um, clubs and extracurriculars. Um, I'm going to talk about here a little bit more in, in a moment. Um, I'm very actively involved with our student senate. We've got about uh, 65 really amazing uh, guys who um, have taken on this leadership mantle among the student body. Um, and uh, I kind of, with Joe Papelka, one of our biology teachers, longtime moderator of Student Senate, we kind of help keep those guys sort of moving in the right direction. Um, and just, you'll, you'll hear some terms a lot throughout your four years here if you're new. Um, student Senate, you can think of so Student Senate often uh, kind of handles whole school activities, so things for the entire student body. Um, homecoming, for example, is, is a major initiative of Student Senate. Um, each grade level also has a its own cla class moderator or moderators, um, and so there are a lot of programs that those folks will plan just for uh, specific classes. So I kind of help work with them just to make sure we're all kind of rowing in the right direction. Uh, we do a lot. Again, Student Senate is very active in this as well, but uh, spirit activities, so rallies, um, student sections, uh, you know, those types of activities. Uh, and then finally, intramurals, which I'll talk about a little bit more in a moment here. Um, that's a big um, effort, both from, from my office um, in conjunction with Student Senate. Um, but I do want to talk a little bit more, uh, Dr. Fior, you can hit the next slide, um, about, you know, clubs and extracurriculars. So I, I would I would probably say of, of any of those five major tasks, I think this is, is probably the most important uh, thing to me. Um, a school like Ignatius, we need, with as many students as we have, we need to have a really vibrant, really great um, extracurricular life for the kids outside of the classroom. And, and I feel pretty confident we do. We have almost 100 different clubs and extracurriculars um, beyond um, the athletic side of things. So just on the non-athletic side, um, we really have this incredibly vibrant community of, of, uh, of teachers and, and, uh, and counselors and campus ministers and other adults on campus um, who work um, very enthusiastically with our kids uh, throughout the day. So um, I have a couple pictures. I'm not sure how easily you can see them, but just uh, this past Tuesday, um, uh, we had during, as, uh, as Mrs. Samick mentioned, during the um, activities period, the formation period, we had what we call our activities fair. And we had a sampling of about 40 of our, 40 or so of our 100 different clubs. Um, you can see um, there was, it was very well attended. I, it, this is one of my favorite events of the year. Dr. Fior and I were kind of standing up on the on the railing of the balcony and sort of marveling at, at the creativity of, of some of these clubs and just how um, enthusiastic the kids were um, about this. So um, it gave uh, freshmen in particular, freshmen and sophomores, but particularly freshmen, sort of a little intro um, into to some of the things that, that we offer here. Um, we're going to follow up with that next week in, in their advisory class um, with uh, a little more uh, information, a little more programming, uh, sort of some pseudo signups, if you will, um, for, you know, uh, for all of those clubs. So hopefully um, you'll be hearing a little bit more from your sons about that. Um, I always say if your sons tell you there's nothing for me to do outside of the classroom, they're they're either lying or like terribly um, just uh, misguided about uh, about what we have here because there, there really are, are so many opportunities. Um, we always tell kids if um, and here's a great uh, here's a great graphic that uh, this is last year's kind of master extracurricular schedule um, just to give you a sense and we're not going to go through all this obviously, but just to give you a sense of just how much variety there is both in time of day, day of the week, 
um, and, and, and some of the different activities that, that we offer. So we're going to be publishing that um, very soon within the next week or two for this year. Um, some of the clubs are still kind of getting their legs under them this year, but um, you will soon be seeing that. And, and I'll be sure to share that um, with all of our parents as well. Um, a couple just notes on some upcoming events. Um, I mentioned intramural is a big part of our office and student Senate. Um, we will be starting rolling out hopefully next week our, our intramural soccer program. This is the first time in many, many years that we're doing uh, intramural soccer. We'll have football, we'll have basketball, we'll have some other smaller activities throughout the year. But we have uh, an incredibly robust uh, program. We, we, we have typically somewhere between like 500 and 750 students in a given season participating in intramurals. So it's, it's a great deal of fun. The kids love it. Great community building for them. Uh, freshman elections for student Senate. Uh, you will be uh, hearing about that if you're a freshman parent uh, in November, kind of mid early to mid-November is when we start those elections. And then finally, homecoming. Um, again, as I mentioned, um, uh, homecoming is Saturday. I'm sure most of you parents know that by now. Um, we've sent out a, a, a lot of information about that, including another reminder tonight. Uh, bids have to be purchased uh, by tomorrow. Um, so please uh, get your guys uh, off the schneid if they haven't done that yet. Um, because we want as many kids as possible um, to attend homecoming. It's a great event. It's, it's you know, probably the biggest student event we offer here on campus. Um, and I think it's going to be an awesome night. So hope to see your guys there. Um, hope to see many of you in the pickup line, which does get a little crazy with uh, almost 2,000 kids attending. So bear with us, but we'll, we'll get them out of there safely. Um, without further ado, I'll turn it over to Pat Gallagher, our AP for Faculty Formation. Thanks so much, Brian. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Patrick Gallagher. Uh, I'm the assistant principal for faculty formation. Uh, I'm a member of the class of 2004 uh, at St. Ignatius High School. Um, this is my 15th year as a member of the, the faculty and staff. Uh, I returned to campus in the fall of 2009, and I served for a year in the alumni discernment and volunteer program. Uh, following that, I worked for about 10 years uh, as a member of the English department. For those years, I was I was chair of the department, and this is my fourth year uh, as a member of, of the principal's team. And uh, I'm so excited to, to be with you here tonight to, to share a little bit uh, with you about uh, my role on, on the principal's team. Um, so primarily, I work with our adults, uh, to, um, our, our faculty, both teaching and, and non-teaching faculty. Um, so my first uh, responsibility is to coordinate the professional learning programming for, for all of our teaching and non-teaching faculty. You'll see throughout the course of the year that there are three days that we call PD days, which are um, all on Mondays and they're days off for the boys. And these are days when uh, the teaching and non-teaching faculty are together on campus, uh, learning together, practicing together, dialoguing together, uh, all with uh, the objective of of being better for your students. So know that on those days, which may seem um, uh, kind of strange if you're not familiar with the world of education, that, that we're working hard so that the uh, the academic experience for your students is, is everything that, that you would expect it to be. Um, I also oversee our classroom observation and evaluation program for our 96 teaching faculty. So uh, while I don't interact with students um, a significant amount on the day to day. Um, they may come home and say, hey, there was this guy in my class today and I wasn't quite sure who he was, uh, but he was there the entire time. Um, so uh, I'm there to, to ensure that, you know, the classroom learning that's that's happening is is meaningful and is tied to our mission. And uh, it's, it's one of my favorite parts of the job to, to be in the classroom and seeing our teachers in, in, in action. Uh, I also work really closely with Dr. Tara Caputo, who's the director of our Center for, for Ignatian Pedagogy. And I'll talk a little bit more about uh, the role of uh, the Center for Ignatian Pedagogy uh, in, in just a moment. Um, I'm also responsible for uh, helping to hire and, and form our, our new faculty. Uh, the hiring process is, is a really fun part of the job because you get to see so many different people who want to come and be a part of the good work that's happening uh, at St. Ignatius High School. 
Um, and then when then when we make our hires and and our new faculty are with us for the first year, I'm helping to accompany them in, in understanding what it means to be a teacher at St. Ignatius High School, what it means to be a part of the mission of, of St. Ignatius High School, um, along with um, uh, Mrs. Amy McKenna, who's the director of our spirituality program for adults. Uh, and then the other major part of my job is to cultivate relationships with external organizations. And one of those primary relationships uh, that we've had for about five years now, uh, as Dr. Fior mentioned, is, is with Challenge Success. Uh, Challenge Success is a, a nonprofit based out of Stanford's Graduate School of Education that is really focused on student engagement and student well-being in school. Uh, so actually, uh, in, in about a week and a half on uh, September 25th, uh, we have our first professional learning day uh, for the year, and Challenge Success is coming to campus to, to lead our faculty uh, in a workshop. So just a, a few uh, comments on the Center for Ignatian Pedagogy. So uh, most of the folks on the principals team now are involved in some way in uh, Vision 30, which is uh, our strategic plan, if, if you've not heard of it. And one of our key academic initiatives coming out of uh, uh, Vision 30 uh, was to launch what we call the Center for Ignatian Pedagogy. Um, this is our unique institutional action research center that's been missioned to investigate the research-based best practices for teaching adolescent boys. Um, we knew uh, during our planning in Vision 30 that uh, we have an excellent academic program. It really is uh, renowned throughout the region and, and throughout the country but we knew that there were ways that we could continue to get better. And the Center for Ignatian Pedagogy is, is our way of saying that we're committed to academic excellence and student engagement with learning. Uh, and uh, this year, we're launching something really exciting uh, called the Faculty and Student Research Fellows Program. So these 11 young men here who are all upperclassmen are, are actually engaged in an action research project right now. Uh, with some faculty advisors, and they're studying uh, some specific um, best practices uh, in their own learning and with their teachers to see what those best practices are, uh, what the effects are on their own learning and on their classmates' learning. Um, so look for more information on the Center for Ignatian Pedagogy as, as we go through this first year's action research project. You know, we'll be really excited to share out uh, our learnings. And then the last thing uh, that, that I wanted to uh, just talk a bit about, you know, everyone's mentioned this before uh, me, but we're a really accessible administrative team. We love partnering with parents. We see that as, uh, again, a primary responsibility of, of the work that we do. Um, one of the other objectives that we have is to make sure that your student feels as if he can advocate for himself so that when he goes on to whatever is next for him um, uh, after St. Ignatius High School, likely college, that, uh, that he um, can really easily self-advocate. So if you ever find that your student is having a conflict in, in a class, um, we'd encourage you to, to have him reach out to the teacher or the coach or the counselor um, to, uh, to start the conversation. Um, uh, that's one of the, the first steps in, in empowering young people. Um, and that can be hard as parents. Uh, that can be a real a real challenge to to give um, your student the advice to say, hey, well, why don't you talk to the teacher first and, and let's see how it goes. Um, if after that, if, if things are still kind of rocky, then, um, uh, you know, you can reach out to the teacher, you can reach out to the coach, you can reach out to the counselor and uh, try to help out a little bit. Um, if we're still finding that uh, the situation hasn't been resolved, our department chairs, um, uh, are, are happy to help and, and intervene. And, and if still, you know, the conflict hasn't been resolved at that point, um, uh, one of us is, is likely to assist. So uh, if it's an issue between the student and, and the teacher that, that you all can't resolve, then I'm the person uh, that, that you go to. Um, we're so happy that your students are with us uh, here at St. Ignatius High School. It's a really magnificent place and uh, we look forward to walking this journey with you all. Next, uh, I'm going to introduce uh, Mr. Kevin Sheridan, who is our assistant principal for student discipline. 
All right. Uh, thank you, Pat. Um, thank you to everybody who has spoken and to everybody um, upcoming. Um, to the parents, you know, we appreciate you spending a few minutes with us. It truly is an honor to, to speak with you. I often, my name is Kevin Sheard. I often joke that I am the one assistant principal that if you don't hear from, it's okay. Um, so um, I do want to take the, a few minutes to introduce myself. Um, I am a graduate of the class of 2003. And my primary responsibilities are, uh, I have two primary responsibilities, and that is to enforce the uh, attendance um, policies that are found in the handbook and to enforce the disciplinary policies found in the handbook. Those are the two main functions I have in, in my office. Um, so I, I do oversee the, the JUG process. Um, which is tied hand in hand with our disciplinary process, which I'll, I'll speak more about here in a second. Uh, two of the other um, roles that I have is I work with the security team on, on all of our safety drills, that's your fire drill, your lockout drill, your lockdown, your tornado drills, really uh, practicing those. We'll have um, quarterly and monthly um, the tabletops. We work with the other administrative teams to do whatever we can do to make sure that your student is as safe as possible while on campus. Um, I, I do lead a, the disciplinary review board. Um, and, and what that means, it's a group of anonymous teachers. If there is a serious offense that needs discussed, we oftentimes bring it outside teachers or, or teachers from different departments to to sit and talk about the case um, to really, you know, and we also invite our counselors to really give an advocate for the students to discuss the policies. And if you go one more slide. Um, so a few, uh, a, a few uh, cases that, you know, if your student does these things, if your student needs to sign out early or arrive late, this ties into our attendance policy. Um, if he needs to do either of those, there is an online attendance form that is attached to the peak of the week um, that you can fill out. For every um, early sign out or, or late arrival due to a doctor's appointment, a dentist appointment, uh, we do ask that uh, your student brings in a note. Um, with the new attendance policy, we are requiring notes. We've gone to an excused, unexcused form for our, our students. Um, if your student does have um, his first period free, um, he does not need to bring in a note. He just needs to show up for second period. If your student has the last period of the day free, we ask that he stays on campus through the end of the exam, which ends at approximately 1.55. That leaves him here through lunch, through the formation period, and through advisory. I would like to add, I know we've talked about advisory a little bit earlier, that advisory is a class where teachers will take attendance. So if your student says, it's just advisory, I don't have to be here. No, he does. Advisory for freshmen and sophomores is on Tuesday and for juniors and seniors on Thursday. We do ask that you do everything you can to um, avoid appointments uh, on those days. Um, another one, if your student is tardy, uh, again, if it's for an excused reason, such as doctor's appointments, dentist appointments, other medical professionals, please bring in a note. Um, and he will be excused from tardy. One of the things that we have gotten away from, uh, a traffic, um, oversleeping, uh, I didn't wake him up. Those, those are unexcused tardies. And when a student is tardy, we ask that he give back to the community with either a 10 or 20 minute uh, cafeteria duty, which helps our, our campus operations department pick up trash, clean tables, sweep the floors. And, and Rady, the, the freshman atrium or the uh, senior lounge. Um, if your student is sick and is absent, um, stay home. We don't want you at school if you are sick. Um, if your student is, is sick after you know, more than three days, we do ask for a doctor's note. That note is not needed um, if it's the first day or second day. We understand that a student might wake up and not feel well and that we don't want you to have to rush off to, to uh, to get him looked at, um, unless he, he's got a prolonged absence. 
And speaking of prolonged absence, if you know you have a surgery coming up, there are forms that we ask your student to fill out to be in communication with not just myself and, and my office, but also um, the student's teachers to let the teachers know that there is an extended absence coming up. How do you get ahead on work? Let's make a game plan. Let's work together with the parents and the teachers to make sure that your students is getting everything he needs while he is gone. So those are a few of the uh, attendance policies. If, um, let's move on a little bit to the discipline. If your student receives a jug, um, if your student receives a jug, you will get an email from, from me in my office early on um, in the morning or as soon as he gets it. Uh, a jug takes priority over everything in the afternoon. That includes athletics, um, other extracurriculars. And yes, we have held students out of you know athletic games. Um, so if your student receives a jug on a Thursday and he has a football game or baseball game or basketball, the, the jug does take priority. Um, he will have to serve that after school. Um, you will receive an email from my office kind of explaining the jug. And if you have any further questions, I, I really encourage you to, to reach out to me to get those questions answered. Um, when we have a jug, it is served after school until about four o'clock. Again, we, we partner with our campus operations department and other faculty and staff who, who need to, to get things done. We give back to the community. It's not sit in a room and sit in silence. Um, oftentimes, this includes things, um, you know, vacuuming, cleaning classrooms, setting up for events, uh, tearing down events, cleaning different things that might be done or might need to be done or around the uh, campus. Uh, that is what would happen if a student receives a, a jug. I do want to make one mention of uh, the off-campus policy, which maybe some of your students have had questions about. We allow our students to go to Phoenix Coffee as well as Wendy's during the school day. If they do decide to go to these one of these two places, we ask that they get their order and bring it back to campus. We ask that they do not loiter um, at Wendy's, they do not loiter at uh, Phoenix Coffee. One of the things we have added um, this week is kind of a trial period is smooth rider smoothies uh, to kind of see um, how the students behave over there. So that is a third option for them. And, and again, if they do um, want to go to smooth rider, we ask that they bring it back to us. Um, so that's just a little bit about me. Like again, as I always say, if you, if you don't hear from me, that means you know your students are doing well. They they show up on time. They're they're not missing um, class. They're they're not late to class. Um, but if you do have any concerns about any sort of behavior, any sort of attendance, please reach out to me and my office. And as I've told all the kids at, at orientation at different times, you are an Ignatius man 24 seven. So that means whatever you do um, outside of school hours, this could be on a Saturday, this could be on a Sunday, this could be at homecoming, this could be at a football game at another sporting event. Uh, you will be held accountable for any poor choices that are made. And if you do hear of anything, if you do know of things that are concerning you uh, about your student, please reach out. This, this works best when we work together. So um, again, thank you for, for your time this evening. You know, I do look forward to talking with you and, and getting to know you if need be um, as we work through the next several years. With that, I would like to introduce Mr. Augie Pacetti, um, Director of Mission. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Um, my name is Augie Pacetti, uh, class of 1996. This is my 17th year here at St. Ignatius. Um, spent most of those years in campus ministry. Um, if you can hit the next slide, please. Um, so my role here is really uh, focused on our school's faith, service, and justice formation. Um, so I really support a lot of our, our faculty in campus ministry, theology, and our Christian action team. So our, our service, our, our faith instruction, faith formation through campus ministry and theology. Um, I also assist the president and the principal in communicating and coordinating our mission-related activities. Um, so if you can hit the next one, um, these three areas uh, really have kind of built out a whole program uh, where we really try to uh, learn about the, our faith, uh, put that faith into action, and really make space for God in our lives. Um, if you can hit the next slide. 
uh, it's done through a lot of different ways, um, through many different uh, service opportunities. One uh, big way uh, your son can get involved is going to a CAT meeting, a Christian Action Team meeting. Uh, those take place every Wednesday morning at 825 in the Companion Center for Faith That Does Justice, which is the first floor of Loyola Hall. Uh, we, we share a lot of stories. Uh, we pray and we learn about different invitations and opportunities to put our faith into action. Um, our students are really uh, wonderfully generous in the ways that they uh, participate in so many different service opportunities. Um, we do uh, also have four years of theology, both, both semesters, um, including uh, a sophomore service experience, which I'll touch on a little bit later. Um, and then our campus ministry uh, team kind of focuses on uh, various areas, coordinating all of our school liturgies, daily prayer, daily examined prayer, uh, retreats, uh, mission trips, uh, pastoral care of students, um, and evangelization and outreach as well. So a lot of great opportunities. Um, and I, I work to try to support and connect all of those areas. Uh, if you can hit the next slide, please. Um, so some of the areas, I think, just to kind of keep an eye out, depending on what year your son's at, um, during freshman year, as Emily mentioned, uh, they will uh, be invited to a freshman family conference with their counselor. Um, in addition to the theology classes and their um, advisory uh, opportunities every year, uh, we also have a few other things each year uh, for each student. So uh, Christmas and our community day is open to everyone, um, but we really like all of our freshmen to participate in that. That's on December 15th, so after uh, the last day of final exams uh, before break. Uh, we have a day where we just do outreach to our local community. And so you'll receive more information about that if you are a freshman uh, parent as well. So that's December 15th. Um, our freshman retreat is new this year. Uh, we did a lot of um, research and looking at some other schools that have some really great uh, ways of engaging students early on in their high school experience, other Jesuit high schools. Um, we went to three different Jesuit high schools in the country last year, and we designed our own retreat here at St. Ignatius. Uh, one night is actually overnight, but it's a three-day, uh, two-and-a-half to three-day experience uh, for our entire freshman class, and all of our faculty and staff are going to be involved as well. Uh, it's going to be a really great opportunity as well. That More information will be coming about that as well. Um, for our sophomores, we have, um, as I mentioned before, uh, sophomore service, uh, which is through the student's theology class and a sophomore prayer group, uh, which takes place through uh, that same class uh, moderated by campus ministry. Um, the students are invited to look um, beyond their own self and their own path uh, and look at relationship with God and relationships with others uh, through service and through prayer. Um, junior year, uh, in between sophomore and junior year, we actually do a, a, a junior family conference where all students and uh, parents and guardians come together uh, for a one-on-one -on -one interview uh, about how have things been going these first two years and what are some goals and hopes for the next two years, really in living out uh, the different pillars of our mission, uh, being intellectually competent, open to growth, loving, religious, and committed to doing justice. Um, junior year, um, there's an opportunity to do an overnight retreat, which is actually something that's mandated. So we have uh, three different types of retreats, a Kairos retreat, wilderness retreat, and Emmaus retreat. Um, and there's plenty of options all year. Uh, I think maybe 12 different options throughout the school year to choose for that. Um, and then senior year, as Emily mentioned earlier, uh, students will uh, be preparing uh, over these four years uh, a portfolio to really present uh, in, in a capstone project called the Sushape Project, uh, named after a prayer uh, authored by St. Ignatius Loyola, to really look back at their four years and see how they've grown in all these different areas. And they really take some ownership in charting their own path and growth uh, over these four years. So these are some things to kind of look forward to in addition to their uh, regular path through their academics. Um, this is really another area of our mission formation that every student uh, has the opportunity for. So if you have any questions uh, about anything in, in any of those areas or ways I can support your son or student, uh, please let me know. Thank you very much. And our next uh, speaker will be uh, Jared Tribble. 
uh, who is uh, director of our uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Uh, my name is Jared Tribble. This is my first year uh, here um, as a faculty uh, at St. Ignatius High School. Prior to, I was the basketball one of the basketball coaches and assistant, and I'm thrilled and excited to have this opportunity and have been enjoying every minute of it. Um, go to my first slide. Now, my role here is, again, the uh, Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. I work very closely with uh, Dr. Richardson Phillips. Uh, she's been an amazing mentor and colleague. Um, first of all, when it comes to our, our mission here, we want to support students um, of all unique backgrounds and differences. And I try to help support kids in that. Um, I collaborate with the Walton Center and the principal's office to provide academic support as needed. Um, I'm also going to be in situations where I provide professional development for faculty and staff that is centered around diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, also give and support students with leadership opportunities. Um, we're responsible for supporting student groups on campus, um, Asian American Students Organization, the Hispanic Student Organization, um, also the Multicultural Student Union. Um, another role that I have is I'm responsible for the academic enrichment for the Majus program, which is for fifth and eighth graders. And um, tomorrow is Hispanic Heritage Month, the beginning of Hispanic Heritage Month, month and we are going to be doing uh, programming that kind of brings awareness and supports, you know, information about their, their heritage. Um, also Black History Month, uh, Women's History Month. Uh, we do programming for MLK. And we also do uh, programming for Missions Week as well. Um, again, my goal is to support students of all um, differences, um, both um, in the classroom and inside of, outside of the classroom as well. I want to be a resource and keep my door open for you know, the successes and also challenges that they, that they have as well throughout the school year. Um, but again, I thank you all for your time. And I look forward to continuing to learn and grow in this role in addition to connecting with you soon. Now, I will pass it back to um, Dr. Fiore for some questions and answers. Um, and unmute myself. Um, if there are any you know, questions that you would like to drop in the chat, or if you would like to speak them out loud, one of the team members would be happy to, to uh, respond as best as we can tonight. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess you have to only put them in the chat. My bad. I'm I'm kind of a technological Luddite. So um, if you have a question, feel free to uh, drop it in the chat box. All right. While you're while you're thinking, um, and maybe you don't have any questions because these presenters were so amazing. Um, I'm going to give another shout out for a plug for our parent program. Um, again, this will be emailed out again in the peak of the week. It was last week, but um, some really great presenters, experts in their field, really great people coming up. Um, you know, definitely would love for us to have a packed house in the Breen Center for Jenny Wallace and Lisa Demore. And I think what you'll hear from the other presenters are very practical, concrete ways that you can help support your student. Um, in all areas of his life. And that's what we're, we're here to do. Jenny Wallace, just real quick, is an award-winning journalist who graduated from Harvard and actually visited our campus a couple of years ago and has mentioned us in her uh, most recent book, which I think is called Never Enough, um, just about stress in, in high-performing schools. So she'll be really great as well, the others. But uh, again, if you don't have any, if you have any questions, please go ahead and drop them in the chat. Otherwise, um, I'll give you about a minute. Um, and if we don't, here we go. Hmm. Oh, senior project new. That's a great question, Megan. Yes, senior project um, will be a, a will be a new project that is actually launching for the next school year. Um, that this year's juniors will be uh, well. There, let me back up. There was a pilot group last year. There's a pilot group this year. 
Um, and then next year it'll be full implementation for the for the whole school. Uh, but the senior capstone project is a new project we created. Yes. Yeah, that's a good question. Maybe for Emily, the question is from Bartley. Thank you, Bartley, for that question. How does a student access the academic coach? I saw on the resource list in the counseling program. Yeah, so our academic coach could be um, reached two ways. One way would be through the school counselor. The school, if you express what your concern is about your student, um, that person would then connect the student. First, try to kind of troubleshoot themselves with the student, but then if they think that the coach is the right move, would go that route. The second way for drop-in services with the academic coach, she's available in the mornings from 8 to 8.30, and she's also there after school from 3 till 4. So those time periods are available for drop-in services with the academic coach. Her name is Coach G. Mm -hmm. If you walk into the Walton Center and say, I'd like to, to talk to Coach G, um, who, whatever adult is there would, would put you in touch with her. So there's a couple other, um, questions in the chat. One is a question related to using the bathroom in between periods. You know, one of the great things is our schedule. Um, we have 10 minute passing periods and hopefully that's enough time for a young man to use the restroom between classes or during lunch, um, or, or during his formation period. So there's some pretty large chunks. Um, and the 10 minute passing period is, is a lot better than the five minute passing period that um, all of the recent alums uh, and myself include on the recent alum had to deal with uh, a five minute passing change. Um, how can students find out about other clubs that were not presented at the fair? That's a great, it's a great question. Um, Mr. Mr. Martin uh, is collecting all of the club dates meeting times, and he will email that out to all students. Another way is just announcements. Every, you know, some clubs get, an, um, you know, a shout out over the PA, others, all announcements have all the club meetings in text every day emailed out to the students. Another question, I wish I knew more about what is happening in advisory to reinforce topics at home. Is there a, any way to add more of the topics to the peak of the week or another family communication? That's a really great suggestion um, and something that we can definitely talk about and see if there's a way to, to put that in on a regular basis in the peak of the week. That could be a, a great um, place to put it. Great, great suggestion. Thank you. Here's a question. Is the information in final forms part of um, the student's official records? If so, who do we work with to get something corrected? Yeah, so every kid in the school has to complete final forms. Um, um, you would probably, I, I would have to double check, Brian may know better, but I think with Nikki Van Heis um, or maybe Brad Gaynor in terms of um, correcting something in final forms. That's correct. Those would both be great resources. Why don't we um, drop those emails? Could someone drop those emails in the chat for parents? Um, Brad Gaynor and Amy uh, and Nikki Van Heis. Last call for questions. I'm sorry that we went over about five minutes. Going once, going twice. All right, I want to thank everyone again for for really coming. I hope this was helpful. Again, we're trying this out. We don't, we, you know, we're, we're hoping to serve our parents the best we can. Hope this was an uh, important and a good use of your time. We'll send the recording out to all families in the peak of the week. Um, feel free to email any of us about anything that we said or something that you didn't understand. Um, and we will get back to you as soon as we can. So again, thank you very much. Thank you for the gift of your son, of your student. We're very grateful to partner with you in his formation these next couple of years, however many, wherever he's at. And uh, have a great night. Thank you, everybody.